Photo modes are a beautiful feature, aren't they? With some in-game tools, it's often really easy to express yourself creatively and make something really cool out of your favorite game. Today we wanted to talk about some games with great photo mode features and to do it, we asked you guys out there to send us some of your best screenshots and photo mode creations. Huge thanks to those who sent in stuff, we wish we could feature all of it, it was really hard to choose, but anyway, let's talk about photo modes and get started off with number 10. First up, we have Hellblade Senua Sacrifice. There really isn't anything special at the photo mode here, honestly it's pretty standard and has your basic features. Hellblade though is unique in the sense that it has a very pretty world without the world actually being pretty. There are the almost dreamlike sequences and all of this really does make for some very, very nice screenshots. And with the slow, heavy combat and the terrifying enemies, there's some room for some awesome action shots. Moving on to number 9, one of many PS4 exclusives on this list, it's time to talk about Days Gone. It has a lot of the basic functions like color grading, filters, lens options, frames, etc. It also does the thing where you can put like a funny face on Deacon, which is always odd at first because Deacon is a very serious character, and Days Gone is kind of a bummer of a game. So it's weird to see him, you know, offing a freaker with a bat to the skull with a huge smile on his face. I think the thing that I really like about a lot of the photos I see from Days Gone is the setting. Days Gone has a really nice looking environment, except it isn't nice, very similar to Hellblade. It's a post-apocalypse game, so it's pretty messed up actually, and that's what makes the photo mode here pretty cool, because even in this messed up and torn environment, you can still take a good photo. Days Gone is just overall a really cool video game, dude. Just go play it. Next up at number 8, we have Assassin's Creed Odyssey. The photo mode in this game is pretty much what you would expect in terms of features, but it's the game's world that stands out, like the last two games on this list. It's so big and beautiful, and there are so many different places to see, giving you the chance to take a lot of different photos. One thing that is really cool about the photo mode in this game is the pinning feature. As long as other players have it enabled on their end, they'll be able to see what photos you've taken. Each time you take one, it'll pin itself to the map in the area that you took it, and other players can check it out. It's kind of like a mini social networking feature baked into the game, I guess, and it's actually awesome. Seeing the other adventures that players are having right alongside you is just really fun to see, and I think it's a little unique twist. At number seven, so out of all of these games, Forza Horizon 4 seems to be one of the ones that just surfaces the photo mode and puts it up front in a way that most other games don't. All you have to do is hit up on the D-pad and boom, you got camera mode going. It's what you expect, you can swing that camera around and get some really cool in motion shots of your car, or you can really set up the shot and take some nice posed pictures like you're trying to shoot for your own car magazine. Which is made easier by the amount of settings at your disposal for things like exposure, shutter speed, contrast, colors, and the like. Honestly, racing games are usually pretty good lookers by default, and the Forza series has always been up there as one of the showpieces for what Xbox consoles can do. So being able to stop the action and really get a good look at what's going on with a photo mode is pretty great. And we hope more games in the coming console generations can do the same. At number six, Nintendo isn't usually quick to pick up on Western trends, but they really made an exception for photo mode with 2017's Super Mario Odyssey, and man, what a photo mode it is. Nintendo obviously put in a bunch of the standard photo mode features you would expect, because, I mean, come on, how, how could you not? But they also put in a bunch of really cool filters, so if you wanted, you could shoot Mario in a way that makes him look like he's being seen through an old game and watch screen, or like with a fisheye lens if you wanna pretend that Mario is in a sick early 2000s skate video. Nintendo first party stuff hasn't really dipped its toe back into the waters of traditional photo mode since, which is a huge bummer, but we can still hold out hope that a mode with similar options and filters can make its way into something like the upcoming Breath of the Wild sequel. Granted, they did implement their own weird style of photo mode in the first one, but I mean, l look at this, how much cooler would this be? Moving on to number five, so God of War is one of those games where the photo mode works and is such a big deal because the game itself just looks so damn good. Sony Santa Monica really knocked the ball out of the park with the design and visuals of God of War, especially given the massive tonal and environmental shift from what players of the series have come to expect with all of its previous entries. The photo mode is exactly what you think. You can orbit the camera and adjust height, distance, focal length, and depth of field, all that good stuff, as well as filters and a slew of other options and it lets you get some really breathtaking photos of the world Sony Santa Monica has created. 
being able to really pan that camera out and appreciate those environments goes a long way to show you things you may have missed when you were just running through throwing your axe at dudes. Oh, and they also included the feature you saw in other games like Horizon Zero Dawn where you can tweak facial expressions and whatnot so you could get really creepy photos of smiling Kratos, which we're very much into. Coming in at number four, we have to talk about No Man's Sky. I love the story of this game. Launching to much scrutiny and leaving a bad taste in everybody's mouth, leading to Hello Games really diving deep and launching a ton of updates with smaller ones like the Pathfinder update that added photo mode and the Beyond update which breathed a whole new life into the game. Say what you want about No Man's Sky, but there's no denying that it is a very good looking game. The procedurally generated planets lead to some really nice looking and interesting biomes and land masses being created as well as the overall aesthetic of the ships and space dudes that you play as, it's just a good looking game. And it being a good looking game mixed with space in general can lead to some really nice pictures. Its photo mode gives you a good amount of options as well, with you being able to pick the time of day, cloud level, fog density, and a good amount of filters. If you jump over to the No Man's Sky subreddit, you can find some really beautiful screenshots that the player base has taken. I definitely recommend jumping on over and checking some of them out. At number three, continuing the trend of PS4 exclusive games having awesome photo modes, it's time to move on to Uncharted Lost Legacy. This is one that was all over the internet for a bit, not because of how nice the game looked, which it did look very nice, but more because of how fun it was. This is one where you could pick between a bunch of different frames and you could also change the expression on Chloe's face. Like you could take a screenshot of you tackling an enemy but make Chloe wink, or make a funny face or smile. You get it. It made taking photos a lot of fun. It also had really good options for you to take serious photos too. You could hide characters, add filters, and even change the direction of the sun, which I thought was a really, really cool feature. People were able to get incredibly creative with this one, and to be honest, every Sony exclusive with a photo mode. But Uncharted games in particular are just so ripe for creativity because the adventures are so big, the set pieces so over the top that you can't help but pause the game and shoot some good shots. You can see exactly what I'm talking about. Look at all of these photos. These games are straight up action movies and the photo mode helps emphasize that. I've seen some very nice photos taken with this game that still pop up on my timeline even today. At number two, it took a while, but eventually Rockstar added a pretty robust photo mode to Red Dead Redemption 2. It's got all your basic options, but you can also straight up switch virtual lenses and immediately change the field of view and depth of field options in accordance with those virtual lens, rather than individually changing and tweaking sliders to achieve the same effect, and the pictures you can get out of this game are absolutely stunning. I mean, look at these things. The game is a real looker to begin with, especially on PC, and we've seen plenty of amazing screenshots even before photo mode was included. But once it was added for real, you really got to see just how good this game looks. From the sprawling vistas to denser towns, right down to the close-up shots, showing the detail of every character model, animal, and environments, it's impressive how adding something like a photo mode really made you appreciate the overall graphical quality of a game like this, and we love to see it. Finally, at number one, Spider-Man for PS4 is a spectacular game and clearly one of the best superhero games out there, but it also has a pretty crazy photo mode that still stands out as one of the best around. So it's got all that good stuff. You have a ton of control over the camera, so you can use it in an orbit around Spider-Man. You can have complete 360 degree control, or you can use it to turn into a selfie mode where Spider-Man is just straight up holding the phone and you get that perspective, which is a ton of fun, especially when you're able to mess with his facial expressions, which because of him being Spider-Man, and wearing a mask, it's all done through the eyes. It's really fun to mess with and can create some really interesting and cool looking shots. But on top of all of that, the game has some of the wildest options as far as filters and stickers go, going so far as that you make like magazine and newspaper covers with all sorts of classic comic book effects put in as stickers so you can get really, really creative with it. I mean, look at this stuff. I can't think of another game that comes close to this level of flexibility and robust feature set. Before we end this, we have some bonuses to run through quick. First up, we have to talk about Horizon Zero Dawn. It didn't make the final list because it's another PlayStation exclusive, and we just didn't want the entire list to be full of those. But Horizon Zero Dawn has an amazing photo mode, just like the other exclusives on this list. And the world that you have to run around in and changing the expressions on Aloy's face and all of that just makes it a super fun time to take some photos. And last but not least, we have Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Photo mode actually just recently got patched into Fallen Order, and so far it's pretty cool. There are some really nice action shots I've seen, and the effect of the lightsaber like mid-swing makes for a really cool thing to capture. I can't wait to see what other photos we get from this game. 
And those are some of the best photo modes in video games that we've seen, but we want to hear from you, so meet us down in the comments and let us know what you think. And as I'm sure you already know, hitting that like button really helps us out. And if you're new here, subscribing is a good idea because we put up videos like this every single day. As always, thank you for stopping by, taking the time to hang out with us, and also thank you if you've submitted a photo for the video. And we'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.